Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. That's not the gospel. Fun Word Friday handles the false gospel. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Hey, if you love our videos, if you're learning about your Christian faith in places you never expected to learn about your faith from, a Lutheran pastor and his very cute Jack Russell Terrier, go ahead and like and subscribe today. You can also go to support.higherthings.org and give today. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things, a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. We are passing that faith to the next generation. It keeps us a-rolling. That's not the gospel. It looks like the gospel. It sounds like the gospel. I think it's the gospel. I want to pull back on the gospel because I don't know the gospel. It's not the gospel, though. You see, there's only one gospel, and that gospel is Christ Jesus crucified for sinners. There's only one gospel, and that is you are saved by the suffering and death of Jesus alone. There's only one gospel, one liberating word that rescues you from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Other messages, which may sound like the gospel, if they don't begin and end with Christ Jesus and him crucified, they are not the gospel. For example, what's going on in the ELCA right now, and I, again, I'm not doing this to slam them, but where basically anything goes, that's not the gospel. The problem is not that the ELCA has gone too far with the gospel. It's that they don't know the law, and so therefore they can't know the gospel because their eyes are off the scriptures. The idea that you can sin more, that grace may abound, and that's somehow the problem with the gospel is not the gospel. Those, if you're found to be a sinner, after you've been justified by faith alone in Jesus Christ, if you're found to be a sinner after that, that's not the fault of the gospel. That's the fault of you. You're the failure on that, not the gospel. The gospel is the free forgiveness of sins achieved by Jesus on the cross and delivered to you in word, water, and in Jesus' body and blood given for you to eat and drink. The gospel alone saves because Jesus alone saves. A gospel that has salvation in something other than Jesus puts it back on you and is therefore not the gospel. A gospel that that is only true if you do something, give your life, make him the Lord of your life, speak in tongues, don't dance. I don't dance. Uh, anyway, those things not the gospel. A gospel which allows you to live wherever you, however you want is actually slavery to sin and therefore not the gospel. A couple of things have to happen for something to be the gospel. The law must come in and pre be preached with a deadly purity. Deadly purity. You need to be emptied of you, trying to save you. The gospel is then poured in to the empty you and is the only hope that you have. The idea that you have some hope other than Jesus is also not the gospel. The idea that God somehow gets rid of the law, not the gospel. Christ died That's the fulfillment of the law, his perfect life and his early su uh, holy sufferings and death. Something where everything's okay with, between you and God and there's no Christ Jesus and him crucified, that's also not the gospel. The idea that the gospel somehow needs to be curbed or brought in, that it's not radical. I don't want to use radical because that's a trigger word. The idea that it's not hyperbolic. It's not the gospel. You see, the power of God unto salvation to all belie who believe is pretty over the top. The idea that you can somehow not be over the top with the gospel, it's not the gospel. Let me help you out with some 
over the top things which are of the gospel. All your sins have been forgiven. That's pretty radical. That's pretty over the top. That's pretty hyperbolic. And by radical, I'm not invoking Ferdy. I'm saying that's pretty, that's pretty out of this world. Paul says that he prays that you would know the hyperbolic power at work in those who believe. That's the forgiveness of sins. That's the gospel. When the gospel is somehow pulled back or stopped short, that's not the gospel. Here's a story. There was a pastor who was on his way out the door. Uh, Brian Mosman tells, uh, tells this story. He's um, a professor at Mequon. Uh, the guy's out the door and a lady comes in and confesses to him um, abortion. And he tries to give her the gospel over and over again, telling her that Christ died for her. Really, he just wants to get rid of her because he needs to go someplace. But she won't hear. She continues to weep and cry and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. Even though he's speaking true statements to her, Christ died for you. Christ rose for you. But that wasn't the gospel yet. And repeating the same formula over and over again doesn't necessarily mean you're preaching the gospel. So finally, whether it was because he was a little crabby pants because he couldn't get out of there or because you just wouldn't hear him, he looks at her and he says, You know... God knows how to murder his son. He knows how to forgive you. He knows how to have mercy on you because he knows what you're going through. Folks who want to pull back on the law, gospel, who think the gospel can't be so sweet, who think that they need to stick to their formulas over and over and over again, as if Jesus said the same thing to every single person. That's not the gospel. If the beginning and end of your preaching is not to comfort troubled consciences, you are not preaching the gospel. If the only words that you speak of law are meant to kill so that you can speak the gospel, then you're preaching the gospel. But if you're trying to improve people's behavior or make them better people, you're not preaching the gospel. Having begun by the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the law? Absolutely not. If you're more worried about whether someone's going to sin afterwards than whether or not they're going to be comforted, you're not preaching the gospel. And all of these folks who love to say, well, I like to stick only to the way that the, thing, the Scripture speaks, are not actually reading the Scriptures. Here's one for you. If you are not accused of letting sin, let, letting, um, uh, if you're not accused of, if you're not asked the question, shall we sin more that grace may abound? That gospel you preach is so great that they're going to live in their sins. Are they? Are they, pastor? If you're not asked that question, you're not preaching the gospel. Because Paul, who knows how to preach the gospel, he gets asked that. So you should be asked that too if you're preaching the gospel. Here's another one. If you can't read Luther, because he's too sweet, you're not preaching the gospel. You should hear your pastor. Ooh, something happened down here. It's bad news. Yikes. You should hear your pastor try to drag you into heaven and throw you in. You should know beyond a shadow of a doubt after you've heard a Christian sermon that your sins are forgiven you for the suffering and death of Christ. I don't care if it's clergy week. Your pastor shouldn't be appreciated if he doesn't begin and end with the suffering and death of Christ. And if he doesn't try his best to plead with you to be reconciled to God and to point you over and over again 
as if the only thing he has, the only theology that he knows is Christ. That's what this is all about. I'm telling you what's not the gospel so that I can tell you what is the gospel. Christ died specifically for your sin. The one that you know, the one that you feel, the one that you stay up late at night, that sin has been answered for by God. He who knew no sin became the worst sinner of all time so that you would be righteous before God. What's true of Jesus now is true of you because of faith. Faith lays hold of the word of God in the water. Faith lays hold of the word of God in absolution. Faith lays hold of the word of God in, with, and under the bread and wine. And faith saves because Jesus saves. No amount of law before or after the sermon can damn you in Jesus. Apart from Jesus, you are only damned. But in Jesus, in the suffering and death of Jesus, you must be saved. Clinging to Jesus you will be saved. You are saved. You. He's going to shut the whole thing down if he doesn't have you. That's how important it is. He's planned saving you before the foundation of the world. He sent his son so that you would be saved. Not that you might be saved, but that you would be saved. Or whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. This is the pure gospel. It rests only on the suffering and death of Christ. It is, it, there's no stopping it, no canceling it, no checking it. It's not the gospel's fault that people sin. That's their fault. They were committing adultery long before they heard the gospel. The gospel is the only rescue for their sins. The only cure. The only thing which is going to make them better. The only thing which is going to give them heaven as a gift. And it all rests in Jesus alone. I'm Pastor George Borkart and I'm Missing Thor. And this has been another Higher Things video short.